In Studio One, there's actually many ways that we can group things together to adjust or edit them all at the same time. As a quick on the fly example, I wanna make some adjustments to all of these drums. You can see them in blue here. So I'm gonna select the first drum, then hold shift on my keyboard and select the last drum. Now that they're all selected, if I were, for example, going to adjust one of the faders, they all move together and notice that they keep their relationship with each other. The same applies to the panning controls and the mute and the solo, the record enabling, you get the picture. You can also do things like insert. So if I did an insert on just one of these channels, that plugin is inserted on all of the channels. Or I can do the same thing with sends as well. So I'll do a send to a new bus over there and you can see they're all routed through to that new bus. Now note here that I'm working with channels in the mixer. If I select my split tool and try and split all of the events related to these channels, it only works on one, yeah? So what I have to do is actually select all of the events. So I'll actually do that by dragging my mouse across all of them like so. And then when I go to split, I'll do that you can see that they all get split in the same place. So there's a little bit of a separation there between channels and events. Now, if you were working just with channels and you knew that you're really just gonna be working with faders, that you want to work with them all together, one of the things that I like to do is make use of VCAs. So what I'm gonna do in this case is again, select all of those drums. In fact, let me hold control on my keyboard. This would be command on the Mac and deselect a couple of these that I don't actually want to make to make the adjustments to. Now I'm gonna right click and do add VCA for selected channels, so I do that. Now you can see that now as I adjust just this one fader that they all move together, the ones that I had selected, okay? I find that rather handy, uh, especially to do with automation, because if, if I've already created some automation for the individual channels, I can kind of scale that automation using a VCA. That's something I quite often do. Now, this is obviously a little bit more of a permanent solution, so I don't have to keep now selecting these channels. I can just use that VCA whenever I want to. And not just for fading, by the way, you can can also use it for muting and for soloing as well. So that's another method that we could use. Now I know that what some people do is make use of folders. So for example, if I would select the kick up here and then hold shift, so I've got all my drums selected again, I could then right click and pack them to a folder. We can see that folder there, it is collapsed. A couple of the things that we can do is we can actually use the split tool. I'll press three on my key for that and you can actually do splits like so but you can't directly actually sort of trim um, this folder track here you'd need to actually expand the folder so that you can see the individual uh, events inside then what I would do if I want to um, adjust all of them is just click on the folder track at the top there and then I can go ahead and do things like splitting or I can do things like um, actual trimming if I wanted to or let's say I wanted to do some fades, I could do fades for all of them at the same time. So that's using folders. But I reckon the most versatile way to deal with permanent group selections is to use the, well, the group feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the first of my drums, hold shift on the keyboard and select the last so that they're all selected again. Then I'm gonna hold control on PC or command on Mac and press G for group. When I do that, this dialog box appears for me to name the group. I'll call it drums, hit enter, and my group is created. So what does this all mean? Let's say, for example, I adjust just one of the faders of these drums. You'll see that all of the faders move together. The same applies to panning, for muting, for soloing, for record enabling, you get the picture. It even applies to inserts, so I could insert a plug-in to all of those channels all at once, and 
also for sends as well. So that's pretty handy. Now, one thing that's really, really different, though, uh, compared to when we manually selected things earlier, is now our edits are also applied to events. So if I select my split tool, I can go at the top and just split one of these events, uh, which belongs to one of the groups, and you can see that they all get split. So that's fairly handy. We can do the same with things, you know, like fading as well. Now you may be thinking to yourself, okay, Mike, that's all very well, but I don't always want to adjust all things all together. Well, I've got a couple of solutions for you, and I think that these really make groups quite useful. Um, to exclude a channel temporarily, for example, when you want to adjust a fader, just hold Alt on a keyboard if you're on PC or Option on Mac, and then adjust that fader. And it just momentarily, while you've got that key held down, excludes that from the group. The same applies to things like panning and for muting, all of that stuff there. Now, one place it doesn't apply, or if there is a keyboard shortcut, I don't know it, and that is when you're doing inserts and sends. So a solution to that would be to manage your group. You can go down to this little icon at the bottom here, this is the group icon, and it'll expand this panel, and you can see the group here. Now, if you just want to disable the whole group, you could just click on this little button here, and then you know the group is no longer being used, and you could assign a keyboard shortcut shortcut to that by the way if you wanted to but what you probably want to do is right click on the group name here and then include and exclude certain things now I reckon for most of us we definitely want to adjust the volume the panning the muting all at the same time maybe even do the editing but we probably don't want to always add the same inserts and sends or at least me anyway I don't often want to do that so I could exclude those like so and that means that although this group is currently active and I can adjust the faders and all that good stuff when I go in and insert a plug into a channel it only applies to that channel so there's a lot of versatility in groups because of these sort of filtering options that you've got here it's a permanent kind of a thing a group it's not an on the fly kind of thing but you will often find in complex mixes that you do want to deal with certain things in groups backing harmonies you know groups of layered guitars all that kind of good stuff now if you often find yourself getting stuck in studio one i highly recommend that you join the studio one revealed facebook group i'll put a link for it in the description down below it's a thriving friendly community over there and if you post a question you'll often find a very helpful member or have it solved for you very quickly indeed don't forget to follow that link in the description down below now during this video we've talked about grouping functionality but what if you kind of want to group sound together well for that you'd probably use a bus now if you don't know what a bus is or you know what it is but you find yourself not using it very often I highly recommend you watch this video right here